I tricked you. <laughs> Welcome to the Night Girls. This is, this episode, is episode 168. 68. And it is August the 4th, 2013. And we're recording at 6.30 my time because today is the preseason opening of football. And I was wondering if that was going to happen. The two teams that are playing are the Dallas Cowboys and the Miami Dolphins and bless his heart my significant other is a Miami Dolphins fan. they're gonna win tonight so I've just um, jinxed them <laughs> so he's spent all day burning off nervous energy cleaning fish tanks and litter boxes and god love a man that can clean so anyway I'm Leslie also known as you don't call me less I'm Laura also known as Lala and yeah we're a little discombobulated. When are we not? So what are you knitting on? I'm knitting on a baby hat that I swore I would have done for today. <laughs> well, blame it on me that we're recording early. We are recording early. That is true. Um, <laughs> which tells you how late we usually record. <laughs> Seriously. So, man, this hat looks big. I'm going to scrunch it up so it looks less big. Alright, so this is a baby hat. It is... Um, I don't even know. Hold on. <laughs> now my show notes are out of order because I had it as finished. It is the Simple Baby Cap from Itty Bitty Hats, which is a Susan B. Anderson book. It was her first published book, which is wonderful. I highly recommend it. And um, it uses size 7, double points. And Into the World in the Godwood colorway, hand spun. And so I decided um, this is going to be a baby hat, and then I changed my mind. I was going to do a vest out of the rest of it, the Milo vest. But I'm going to knit a mommy hat. So oh. one of my good friends um, from work, who no longer works with me, she went to a different school, came up to say hi to me, and she had a bump. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and she had announced it on Facebook. And if y'all are on Facebook ever, you can tell that I am horrible at the Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> so. She's better than me, because I, I go to Facebook once a week to post our episode, and that's all. <laughs> I don't use it for anything else. I'm trying to get better about being on Facebook, so we'll see. You know, social media comes and goes, which reminds me I need to close the social media poll, because I said I'd do that August 1st. Anyway, so, yeah. <laughs> um, it's fine. Gives you guys an extra couple days to write comments. Um, hand spun, Into the World, Baby Cap. And Mama Cap. And Mama Cap, I think. So that's the first thing, soon to be off the needles. The second thing on the needles, I'm looking around like I know where things are, is um, I started some new socks. They are just a wee bit. I had to go in for a meeting at work. Um, work for me resumes on Monday, and I am mentoring the new art and um, spotlight, which is like gifted teacher so I went to a meeting to meet up with her and got a little bit of knitting done this is the welcoming worm colorway from Sadie or Blue Ruin and she has a shop called Knitter's Nightmare it's actually on vacation right now I think until the 7th yes yeah, something like in, that um, she's back in Canada helping her mother move because she's cool. a good person she's a good person she's good people's so this is this is one of her labyrinth inspired colorways. I have this one and then I have the Goblin King one. So it was already caked, <laughs> which was like the deciding factor <laughs> as I was running late as to what to knit. I was like, ooh, I could knit that one because it's caked. So and it's on some really? high high sharps, which look like that. And they are size one U.S. So which is what two point two five. Uh, yes, 2.25. That is in my tangerine design. Bitchin' bag. So, <laughs> very excited about him. And that's from Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the yes, Bus, right? Yes, he has dreams, you know. Um, other things on the needles. I'm going through my stash and trying to knit up some of the older stuff. Get it out of the stash. And one of the things I had gotten when um, Leslie and I were driving to Tempted, Stacy of Tempted Yarn's house, she lives in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. we had stopped by a yarn shop in Arkansas where the university is, one of them, in Arkansas. Oh, yeah, and they had the little... Um... It's the one that does the Razorbacks. That's University of Arkansas, right? 
Oh, I don't know. I was talking about she has the candy and the scoop thing at her. At no, her this, this, this was a different one. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Where the designer <laughs> for that was there. Yes. So we got to meet the designer, who is Cassandra Dominic. And she actually was wearing this hat. Mm -hmm. And so I bought the pattern, which is $4. And it is available on Ravelry as well. Actually, I think one of her patterns is the Ruffleupagus pattern as well. That cute little baby sweater. But I'm knitting this hat. If I can you get it out. You got the yarn that it called yep. for too, right? I did. It's an interesting construction yarn. So this is what it's looking like knit up so far. It's pretty what is the yarn content? What is it called? What is so it? the yarn itself is. I had. I need two balls. It's SMC Del Select Tweed Deluxe. It's like that. I don't even know if it's still being made. This is colorway seven one one two. And the composition is, which German score? 54% uh, alpaca with a K, super fine. Uh, sure wool, so new wool, wool, 32% of that. And then 14% of a polymide, which is nylon. Right, man. So it's kind of got like a cable construction. So it looks like it's wrapped. In something. Well, it's kind of like wrapped but cabled. If you look at the side, it's kind of like a, kind of like it's... the edge of a cast on is. And then when you flip it, see. It's a little blurry. I can't see it. But um, it's just a really interesting. It's a chain because it's got like loops, with a lighter outside and then um, darker inside. So it's knitting up kind of interesting. I'm going to try this pattern, I think, again, because um, I'm enjoying the pattern. It's going really fast. It's probably like two hours worth of knitting, because it's on size 10 needles. So that always goes fast. So, um... <laughs> Sorry, I've got, like, barf on my I'm here. goofing off because you're not paying attention to me. Oh, are you needy, McNeedy pants? I am like a small child. <laughs> All the time. Um, so, <laughs> I have nine inches to go. I don't know how far I am. Probably five. It's almost done. Almost, <laughs> almost done. <laughs> almost done is half the fun. So this is what's left of the first ball, and then I have the other one in there. And, um, that's that, and that is in my, um, my cool SSK bag, which actually, it is from, I'm totally gonna not remember. I'm a horrible person. She does the stitch marker and bag club. She's from Canada. Bling your string. Bling ah. your string, yeah. I like it when people put helpful little hints inside their bags so I can remember things. I knew that. And I'm using she her was, stitch markers on something else. She was a really generous donor for prizes. Yep. And I'm really looking forward to picking out a bag of my own from her shop. So it actually fits, like, the pattern. This is going to be, like, my go-to hat bag I have a feeling because I can fold the pattern in half and it goes like fits perfectly right there and then the two balls and the needles and it's got stitch markers so if I forget stitch markers ta-da and I liked her stitch markers I used them on the shiny they're shiny uh, <laughs> on the baby sweater which I finished but that's another story alright that's I think all I have on the needles Oh, I have the leaven wick, but it hasn't been touched, so I'm not even going to show it. Okay. Um, whew, I nodded a little part of this. Okay. I'm working on the Josephine shawl. It has gotten exactly two rows done since you saw it last. So I'm on a new color. It's blue. Ooh! Fancy! <laughs> so this is a simple asymmetrical shawl. You increase on one side every other row, and that's it you just keep going and you bind off when you're almost out of yarn and I'm using Noro Tayo which is a cotton wool silk and I just got a huge yarn bar so I'm dealing with that and I only have one other thing on the needles and this is last year I saw when Laura and the rest of the crew were waiting in line at Jenny the Potter Saturday morning at Rhinebeck we had to be there at you know 7.30 so that we could get in line for Jenny the Potter because Jenny the Potter was like, I don't know I guess she's still sort of the go-to person for 
coffee mugs and stuff that are yarn. Well, she does exclusive ones things. for each yeah. show, so. That's true. And she does bowls and jewelry and other things. Yeah. So anyway, we got in line, and, well, they got in line. Everybody but me. <laughs> you so got a just, hot chocolate, I think, at one point. I was milling around, and, um... I ran into Amy Christopher's, which, by the way, it's not Christopher's, it's Christopher's. I've been saying it wrong forever, apparently. <laughs> um, in fact, we told this story at SSK, but Laura and I thought about adding a segment to our show, which was called, like, that basically... We, <laughs> um, what have so we, we said wrong this go week? go over things that we said <laughs> wrong the previous week, but then we decided that would pretty much probably be our whole show. So. Yes, Melinda. <laughs> um, anyhow, while I was waiting for them... I ran into Amy Christopher's and her friend Julia Farwell Clay. And um, Julia was wearing a pattern that I really loved. And I hadn't seen it before that day. And She's got a this. bunch of really pretty patterns. She does have a lot of really pretty patterns. It's called Hero. And so it, it's based on the Elizabeth Zimmerman percentage system. It's a You can do it as a cardigan or as a pullover. Um, and it's got these cool fade effects for... Let me see if I can get you another picture. It's got ferrule in it. Yeah. It is very, very simple ferrule. It's nothing too crazy. Oh, goodness. <laughs> like, I jumped back like that was coming at my face. <laughs> and I decided this would be my Rhinebeck 2013 sweater. Yay. And um, I decided that way back and then kind of let it... I haven't touched it. You bought the yarn, it, though, right? Yeah. I had yeah, you bought the yeah. yarn. And then, um, because I bought my yarn and I was like, I remember us buying the yarn at the same time, yeah. And actually, a bunch of us were going to do it, and we um custom ordered a colorway of fiber we were going to spin for the yoke, but anyway, that didn't happen. That's okay, <laughs> Ch plans change. They so, do. anyhow, Amy finished hers, which made me think, well, crap, I guess I better start mine. Amy Froggy Monkey from Knitting in Circles, mm -hmm. which she hosts and... with her husband, Darren. So I started mine on um, this week sometime, and I decided I was going to do, uh, and Melia Bella started hers as well. You were swatching for it last week. I was swatching last week, but I think I started the actual hem of it Monday or Tuesday. And so it's got a folded hem, which means you knit, you cast on provisionally, and then you knit an inch and a half in this twisted rib. And then you do a purl row, and then you knit that same distance in stockinette, and then you basically, you're with a provisional cast on, the idea is that you can pull it out really easily, but when you do a provisional cast on, and then you do twisted ribbing, it doesn't pull out as easy. <laughs> like, you have um, to... So, just, which kind of provisional cast on did you I use? I did the crochet one over the needle. Okay. Because that's the easiest one for me. Judy's Magic Cast-On is the easiest one for me. I haven't done that as a provisional cast-on before. Also, Maybe I hate crochet time. hooks with a passion. <laughs> and so, <laughs> they don't live in this house. So, um, anyhow, so that was like a whole two hours of, of unpicking the flipping cast-on, because I didn't think ahead. But anyhow. I was just curious. Um, this is, as far as I have gotten, I am doing a... Um, I'm knitting it as if it were a pullover, but I'm actually going to steek it and do and put a zip in and make it a zip front cardigan because I didn't want to have to deal with buttons and I hate putting buttons on sweaters because Is they zip always... the new short term for zipper. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not down with your British lingo. It was because I rewatched the um, the Great British Sewing, oh, and okay. they used, I guess maybe that's it. It's in my head. Uh huh. But anyhow, I have. 14 and a half inches done and I have three more inches to go. You're not looking at me. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Look at how much I did. That is incredible. I did this. Can and... I do like sparklers and fireworks <laughs> for you? Um, so this is three entire balls of Cascade 220 Superwash in the colorway 1946. How many total balls of the main color are you going to use, do you think? I think I will probably use five, but I have six, okay. just in case. I'm asking because I have four skeins of Cascade 220 in a black superwash that mm -hmm. I bought. I don't know why. 
in the stash that I'm diving through, and I'm trying to figure out a project for it. And I was like, maybe I could do my hero with my black. You could. Just knit, get one more skein of it. Yeah, I'd have to alternate, because I got um, the first four at that yarn shop in Hernando that went out of business. Yeah. When I took my payment in yarn. Yeah. So, um... You could do that, though. You could use the, the other skein on the sleeves, and then it wouldn't be... Or anyone. I could just alternate. I like how I just made your sweater all about me. Yeah, I'm used to it. Um, <laughs> so, and I worked with a bunch of friends. I texted a bunch of people, and I was like, pick colors for me. Pick color orders. Yeah. Um, and so it's going to be, this is the main body. And then this is the next color, which is like a sort of a seafoam green. And then this is the next color. That's the one I picked. And then yes. this is the one that will have sleeve detail and it'll be close to my face. This is the, the red. I love red. I mean, that's no surprise to y'all. So these are my colors. And I'm very happy with the choices. And I have, I had three inches from this marker right here. So I've got maybe another two inches little under that. You are freaking flying on that. Before I'll be done with the most of the body. And then you do sleeves, you join everything, and that's when the color work starts. Well, the color work starts on the cuffs, too. I'm looking forward to something besides gray, because I've done a lot of gray in the, this week. Well, that's a lot of knitting that you've gotten done. It is. You're making I've me feel like a texting people, and, like, I texted Amy, and then I texted, um... Megan and I was like y'all are going way too fast on these sweaters you're making me feel like a slacker and then I found out that some people knit like four hours a night <laughs> I totally do not knit four hours a night <laughs> that'll never happen I do like if I have an absolute deadline like a firm deadline yeah. that I've just goofed off on but you don't goof off you brainstorm for multiple days instead of knitting. <laughs> and by brainstorm, you mean play Candy Crush. Well, yeah, you're allowing your creative <laughs> yeah, juices uh -huh. somewhere to, yeah. So anyway, that's all I'm working on. Um, you have a finished object, I believe. I do. Well, I have three finished objects. Two are not here. One is. Hey, okay, look, it's a hat. Yay! <laughs> That looks familiar. With the ends woven in. Where might I have seen this before? Um, so that's done. And uh, I finished a baby cardigan. It was the one that I knit out of the Metal and Tosh Vintage in the Stargazer colorway. And it is wet because we recorded early. <laughs> and I took it out to block it. And it's still quite wet. Um, so I'm not going to show it. And then actually, y'all, I'll put some pictures of it up on Instagram. My Instagram username is what? Lala Knits? Lala Knits, yep. Is it Lala Knits or Lala Knits 1? I think it's just Lala Knits. Okay. Nets. Um, so you can see it there. I'll try to remember to post some in the show note, like, group thread, too, on Ravelry. I should post a picture of that hedgehog that I finished, Who too. was for? Who was it for? It's for Alicia. Oh, okay. And I'm going to see her, hopefully, next weekend. Are you really going to convince her to bring a baby to the market? No, she won't bring the baby to market. Oh, okay. She would if I'd hold him the whole time, I think. I would deal. <laughs> um, so, I keep wanting to call him Einstein, but his name is Edison. Edison, Edison was born James. on Friday, so congratulations to our good friend Lisha. Um, He's nine and a half pounds? He, almost, yeah. <laughs> He's a big old boy. He is. Oh, so, talking about, I'm putting away my double points, but this is, I got this idea from Paula of Knitting Pipeline. And I just keep my random double points in all the same size. This will be sevens. And these are gumball tubes that you can buy on Etsy for wedding favors. And my four to five inch double points fit in here nicely. I think they're six inches long, maybe. The six inches almost fit, but without the cap. So, and people use the button, because buttons come in things like these, tubes like this too. So you can use leftover button tubes, but that's where my double points left. Um, so anyway, the vintage Stargazer sweater, which is super cute. It was started in Susan B. Anderson's baby cardigan class at SSK, is done. 
And I just have to sew on buttons. And mom's not here, so I have to sew on the buttons myself. <laughs> oh, which will be fun. I'm not super happy with the buttons I got at Joanne's, but I'm, I'm going to go through my button box, too, and double check. And I also finished the soft kitty socks, and they were mailed on Saturday. So they are off to their new home, and I posted a picture of those on Instagram. And I'll try to post those. I ended up with less than a color repeat left. So out of one skein of the DK weight, um, the Happy Camper Base from Fiber Nymph in the Soft Kitty colorway, using size three needles, and I can't tell you what my gauge is, but I got five inch cuffs and size six women's feet. And I probably, if I didn't make them matching, and that was with a top down gusset heel, um, just a slip stitch regular sock heel, you probably could get up to, I would say, a size 8. If you wanted to get more than that, you would have to get rid of your cuff length, or you would actually have to, that's if you don't make the match. If you want to make yeah. the match, then that's probably the biggest size with that with that cuff length that you could do. Now, of course, you could adjust your cuff length or buy a second skein. Mm -hmm. So that worked out pretty perfect. I was very happy with that. And I'm sending those and all my good mojo to our friend in Florida. Yep. And that's it for me for finished objects. You have a finished object, though. I do. Don't sound so surprised. I wasn't sounding surprised. I was sounding awesome. Like always. Uh, I was lucky enough that I was able to meet up with Mama Linneman this week. Um, Mama Linderman, Beck, and Wheezy. We met up and I picked up some stuff that I had left at SSK, including my um, sock head hat that I've put somewhere. Um, and my mini spinner <laughs> that I had left. And anyhow, it was nice to sit and chat with them. And I appreciate them coming out. They're always a lot of fun. I'm surprised Wheezy came because that I didn't think was in the original plan. Um, I don't know. Maybe he just wanted some diner food. <laughs> I he tell he you. does like a good diner. Maybe it was being able to spend some time with his youngest daughter. That could be it. Um, anyhow, I got to see them and, um, they, she brought a bunch of the stuff that I had left and then I passed some stuff that needed to go to Laura to her. So she's like a mule. <laughs> she's our forth. yarn mule. Yeah. And, um. So anyhow, I was able to finish my sock head hat Yay! out of the Cyborg's craft room in the Esquishalate base. I knit an inch on that, by the way. And the colorway looked cutest. Are you to the stockinette part yet? Oh, you knit on mine? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. My stuff was back in my ro in the room, and I was like, eh, I'll just sit here and knit on Leslie's. Can you mm -hmm. figure out where? No, there's <laughs> no marked... Normally... Laura's gauge is much looser than mine. I'm a very tight knitter, and she's a loose knitter. And normally I would be able to tell, but I guess not. Anyway, I knit this on size threes, and this is what the colorway looks like caked up. Out of a total 100 grams, I have 42 left. Wow. So I could make another one, just a slightly shorter one, so maybe a more fitted one. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. And... It cool. looks so silly when they're not on people. I know. It's like a condom when it's not on a person. But, um, so yeah, it's nice and droopy. It's good for those days where you have, you don't want your hair too messed up. Well, or you're having a crappy hair day and you just yeah. want to, like, pretend it didn't. And you just, <laughs> That's a good look. But, yeah. It's uh, a very easy, super easy pattern. It's free. It's on great for travel. It is great for travel, and I realized that I hadn't touched it since it came back about 4 o'clock this afternoon, and I guess Laura got me past the 9-inch bump, um, <laughs> so I was able to start decreasing, and now it's done. So, it's awesome. Cool. That's the only FO that I have. Yay! Maybe next week I'll have a finished sweater. <laughs> Not gonna happen. It could happen. You yeah. are much more likely to achieve that goal than I am. Well, I'm a little further on with mine. But it's worsted on size 8 needles, so it's going pretty quickly. That's good. Um, I have no spinning. I began spinning. The rest of it's downstairs on the bobbins. I just started this this afternoon. So I have a plethora of loop bumps, and I'm going to spin some of them. And this was when I was in her club, the lovely Lala colorway. Aww. 
And it's got um, Marina, Cordell, Bamboo, Tessa Silk, and Angelina. And I've gotten almost past this dark purple point right there. And then there's a white, another purple, and then a green. Oh, I'm sorry, a white, two greens, and then another purple. Colors, they are key. How are you spinning it? Oh, I'm just spinning it. Um, short draw, uh, inchworm style, maybe a slight back draft when I'm bored. And it's probably around a mm, fingering weight single. And then I'm going to just Navajo apply it, and I'm going to knit a hat out of it. Probably the Lost Banner hat by Susan. Cool. I might be slightly obsessed with hats right now. Nothing wrong with that. Remember when you had a bunch left and your kids needed warm hats yeah. and mittens and you loaned them? Yeah. And then um, next Ooh. up on my needles, when I'm not obsessed with hats, is my Camp Loopy. So this is the yarn that I got for Camp Loopy. And, and skein yarn out of Australia. Skein and puddle. And apparently it comes with my hair for free. And what are you knitting? Um, line break. So it's an 880-yard shawl. That's a shawl, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, with It's a texture. big shawl. Yep. Yeah. It's got almost like a raglan, but short row type shaping. Um, but Lynn, Jess, and I are all knitting it together. Lynn and I are doing it for Camp Loopy. Jess is doing it because she's a follower. <laughs> That's nice to have people to knit along with. I know. So... I was joking with her earlier, and I was like, man, I wish I could steal someone's stuff for knitting so I would actually have things to show on the shelf. And she was like, I'm knitting the same stuff you are, so it doesn't really work. Did you watch, funny. I don't know if, if you've had time to watch Karen's latest one with going back to school stuff, but she... Um, Karen around the twist goes through all the stuff Jessica knit for her and the babies. Aww. It's like 15 minutes of stuff. There's so much stuff. Jess is so sweet. I love she the is. fat kitty sweaters that mm, she The knit. fat bear, yeah. Yeah, so. It's very sweet. So is that all the spinning you have? Yes. Wow. Well, I spun, I'm trying to get better at drop spindling, so I spun a little bit on um, some drop spindles, but they're basically my two that I've been spinning on yeah. for over a year and there's Perfect. not really a change. Yeah. So, no. Nah. I'm like, it's so funny because I love um, yarn raising with Malia, mm -hmm. who is Rhymes with Maria, but like she can bust out some stuff. Like I spin an ounce on the spindle a year. So it's Do very you, inspiring to me. crazy woman, and I say that with love because I did get to spend some time with her at SSK and she's very sweet and I really like her, but... That woman got four ounces of fiber, spun it on four different spindles, and then plied it all together, and still got like a you know seven thousand yards or something. Like I don't know how she does this. <laughs> that it was her tour de fleece, though. In her defense, but still four ounces on that's spindles. That's all she spun. For the it's, most part, she's got some witchcraft going on or something. I'm very <laughs> jealous. I get to spend time with her at Stitches. I'm excited. I'm very jealous of that too. You get to spend time with a lot of people at Stitches. That's I awesome. know. It's gonna be fun. We'll talk about that in a second. Yes, so we have a magazine review, and we my do. tablet is sort of kind of cooperating this cool. week. Cool. I don't have an iPad. I have a Nexus 7. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so anyhow, we are going to review if this thing will wake up. I spoke too soon. Would apparently. you like me to get mine out? Yes, we can oh, okay. Knit Scene, um, Fall 2013. And this one um, just came out. And you can get the digital copy or the paper, the print copy. Yep. Um, this <laughs> that is... was very enthusiastic of me. Do what? I said that was very enthusiastic for me. I think it's eight dollars for both. I'm trying yeah, to remember. Yeah, it's only seven something. Seven ninety nine, maybe. Seven ninety nine. Um, this is Amy's first. It is issue. Although, to be fair, most of these patterns and everything were picked out before she came on as editor. Uh -huh. Not that that makes a difference. But... So Amy Palmer is the new editor of Knit Scene, mm -hmm. so congratulations, Amy. And Knit Scene is actually, um, well, Interweave in general is around Fort Collins, Colorado. So yep. they took pictures at Fort Collins. Mm -hmm. And we have a friend, um, Lynn, who works at the Loopy U in Fort Collins. Yep. 
So there are lots of nice articles and patterns, and I'll, I'll go ahead and just talk about the first pattern that I like. Um, I think Laura also mentioned that she liked this one as well. This is the Allison Pullover. So it's got like some very flattering shaping with the cables. And you this can is... See where the decreases help to give her an hourglass shape. Not that she needs help, but... So the first um, grouping of patterns comes with an interview with Cassie Castillo, and these are all by her. And I actually like her rosemary cardigan as well. I like that there's zigzags on the pockets. Yeah. And that's out of, uh, the cardigan's out of Cascade 220, which I might have a plethora of <laughs> in the stash, like six sweaters worth. And the Allison uh, pullovers out of Barocco Ultra Alpaca, something I also have sweaters worth. I believe that I have a sweaters worth of the Ultra Alpaca light somewhere. Very cool. I also like the mitts that she did. Those ones with the little mm -hmm. cable detail. And those are the June mitts, and they are out of Dreaming Color Smushy, and I have a ton of Dreaming Color Smushy left over from a sweater. So... <laughs> Those could be a theme. cool uh, little add-on project. Yeah. I also like the Forester Hat by Ashley Rayo. Neons are very in. Yeah, and but it that is would cool look... with the, I mean, it is different with the flaps and then the palm yeah. on top. Um, I wanted to sort of give a shout out to their design or <laughs> layout. It's called My So-Called Cables, and it's in the same font and styling as a show that was on when I was in high school called My So-Called Life mm -hmm. with Claire Danes, and that is the reason I dyed my hair red once, which was a terrible, horrible mistake, <laughs> but the styling is very reminiscent of the show. I also like the Impression Vest, which is out of Blue Sky, Sky Alpaca's hand dyed, and it looks like that. It's got a side panel. Mm -hmm. I'm very into vests right now. Actually, I could probably do... I wonder what the gauge on that is. Oh, new thing with Interweave, or new to me. I just discovered it. Leslie told me that she already knew. When you click on the picture of the pattern, do it. Oh, it's not going to do it. <sighs> click on the name of the pattern. There it goes. It goes to the actual pattern page. Yeah. But it doesn't work the other way. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, you can't click on the pattern instructions and go back to the beauty shot it doesn't work that way so that i might should, be but... able to do that no that's too never mind the gauge is off i was thinking on my black the gauge oh. is wrong sorry i was back on my other thing um i kind of like this uh varice pullover which is slip stitch color work um there's a better picture on the next page which it almost looks a little bit like crochet in this picture maybe it's just me but it looks a little bit like crochet in this picture, which isn't a bad thing. It just, no, uh, and there, there's a focus on here on um, more ombre yarns, but mm -hmm. then it goes into actual color work sweaters. It's, and I do, I like that. It does remind me of crochet. Yeah, but not in like a negative way. No. I mean, it's just a, a different textural look to it. Yep. And then there is the Emmanuel sweater, which I like the pops of color. It is yes. Tarja, so it will never be knit by me. Yeah, probably me. Either. And it's probably not the most flattering thing for me um, anyways, because I would not have a very smooth, flat front like that model does. <laughs> it happens. Yep, so. But it's very cute for you skinny girls. And that's out of Brown Sheep Company Nature Spun Worsted. A lot of this... worsted weight sweaters in here. Yeah, well, that's good. There's actually a, a an open work one, worsted weight one that's de decent. This one is the Zahara cardigan, and it's out of Quince and Company Chickadee. And oh, let me zoom back in so y'all can see. I think it's interesting. I think the colors that were chosen were not the best colors. I think that it just looks a little sickly in those colors. But, and I also think that in order for it to be slimming, which I think most women would go for, you'd want the stripes going in the opposite way. Like the thickness to the thinness, you'd want it reversed. 
or at least I probably would. And maybe that would be me. an easy change to do. It would be, um, but I, I do like the overall shape of it, and I do like that it's got that sort of Jay Walker looking um, detail on the back. Yeah. So I do like the it. Chevrons. I just think that the colors that were picked were poor, uh, poor choices. If it's meant to appeal to a wide audience, but you know, can't win them all. Yep. Was there anything else that you liked? Um, there is one other sweater that I like, uh, but I will probably never knit, just because it's primarily reverse stockinette stitch. And it's the confectionery pullover, which is by um, Karina Ferguson, Picnic Knits. And I do Cute. like it, but because the majority of it is knit in reverse stockinette, which is basically... you. The, the opposite of stocking it. You, if it's, it's knit in the round, you would be purling every right. round. Um, and not necessarily because I dislike purling so much, but because my purling and knitting gauge are dr drastically different, it would be a huge pain in the butt for me. So I do like it. I do think that it's very pretty, but I probably wouldn't make it. And we had a discussion where you could turn it inside out and mm -hmm. reverse the knits and the purls and then flip it for the lace section. Yeah. Um, well. I will say that I did have a complaint with, and I, I don't know if this is all interweave or all maybe just knit scenes because I've never paid attention before, but when I went to look, a lot of these go up to around the 40 to 50 bust size, or the 48 to 50 bust size, and I'm a 48 bust. So for me, I need to know whether or not it has positive or negative ease to see whether I would have to make additional modifications or what have you. And it doesn't, the, no sweater in this book gives you ease information about whether it should have positive or negative ease. And I think that's very common, like the lack of ease information. You yeah. don't find whether or not there's positive or negative on models as pictured very often. I wish that you did, though. It would help you make a more educated decision From about... A designer standpoint, once you send a sweater off to a company like Interweave, they just determine the model size that it's on. So that Absolutely. would be yeah, that would be more on Interweave than it would be on the designer. Like well, self published. Well, not necessarily stuff. because you could still say you know, a thirty four inch chest should knit the thirty six inch size, so they have two inches of positives uh -huh. or what have you. I mean, but that might not be reflected accurately on the model. Does that That's make true, sense? but it should still be in there at some point, you know? I don't know. I feel that way. I feel like I need to know that information to make an informed choice. I feel like on self-published patterns, it would be a lot easier to do. Oh, absolutely. I do. I, I recognize that as a designer, when you send something off to Interweave, you kind of you lose you have control. to relinquish control, yeah. right? Because they have to make it fit within their their you know theme or whatever it may be i don't know i guess i just i see that as a missing thing that i need yeah from mag this magazine yeah. not necessarily any individual design but yeah so that's our review a little more <laughs> rambly than usual sorry about that um so favorite things I'm going to stitches. I'm going are. to stitches. <laughs> and that is next weekend? Next weekend. Yes. Yep. I fly in at midnight. Becca's picking me up at midnight. We've decided no sleep. Oh, god. We're going to go to the pancake place and get some more pancakes. Wow. And it's going to be awesome. Okay. <laughs> I wish you guys lots of success with that. So if I look tired on Saturday, you will know why. And I'm going to have pens to give out. Special. Oh, cool. Did you find them? Yes. Okay, good. Special pens. Yes, we... <laughs> the pens at SSK. We've gotten more comments on those pens. I love those. I've given too. them to people at work, too. <laughs> that might be what we have to replace our buttons with. Our I think so. I'm or very into that. my other favorite thing... Well, I don't want to say favorite. One of my other favorite things from the goodie bag... Is our tape mm. measure with a carabiner on it. I love that. So you can clip it on your bag. It's so genius. I, I didn't get one. So smart. I need to get you didn't one. Get one. Oh, pudding. I got one. That's okay. Eloise just traded me her punky yarn for gamut. So now I have two skeins. <laughs> um. So yeah. So stitches. You're gonna be wearing stitches. I don't know. 
everywhere. <laughs> no, I'm going to be mostly in, um, I'm getting in, I'm helping uh, Ponky, Sarah of Another Crafty Girl, and Carrie of Jelby, who's the person who um, these cute little flock locks belong to. So, and she'll, once she gets back from Stitches, she'll update her store. But it's J E L B Y mm -hmm. on Etsy. And um, I'm going to be in their booth primarily and buying stuff from Fresh from the Cauldron and Twisted Fiber Arts. <laughs> and Ponky and um, Jelby are doing like a special kit. Oh, cool. For stitches. For stitches. It's exclusive just to stitches um, cool. together. And then um, the tins are always exclusive to that event, but uh, the yarn will be made available later. And um, those are my, like, three things that I really want to buy things from. Three places, I guess. And I'm just So gonna that's be... actually going to cause us to record a day late next yes. week because Laura will be flying back on Sunday. So we'll record on Monday of next yep. week. And don't be a stalker. Come say hi. I that's need a so... button that says that. <gasps> we need to make buttons that say I wasn't a stalker and have the Knit Girls Lego. That so might cool. be a little like niche. Like, <laughs> that would be. You could only get them at events <laughs> when yeah. you see us and don't stalk us. That'd be so yeah. cool. That might be a little crazy. <laughs> Fitting with us. <laughs> So, what um, else? so stitches. I go back to school on Monday. Kids go back on Thursday. My library is a disaster. I was up there all last week working on it. So, it is getting better. Um, yeah, that'll be fun. I'm gonna get a lot of knitting done on these because I have a lot of meetings. So. Oh, see, I was looking at the show notes and I could swear it said school resumes for Laura and I was like what is she doing resumes for <laughs> <That's your laughs> <news. laughs> Woo. see this is why we don't have a what we were wrong about last week <laughs> and um that's really just about it for me I'm trying to think I got my into the world shipment who pretty it what came all over at SSK actually it's Quark it's Falkland it makes me happy pretty I got so, a shipment this week, too. Yeah, go for like it. The um, Tempted Yarn Club shipment. Ooh. And I got to see the pattern a little bit early. Because <laughs> I was helping her get it on her site. And it's a pattern by Rebecca Danger. It's her, um, it's a non-toy pattern. I love it's it. her shawl pattern. It's very fitting with Rebecca, too. She did a it great is. job with it. It's um, got sort of horseshoe inlays, and it, it kind of references back to a big tattoo she has on her back that's very pretty. And um, this is Heavenly Girl, so it's 950 yards wow. of her lace, and it's in the Lady Luck colorway. Very pretty. Yeah, so it's in this primarily yellowy orange with the pops of orange red in it. I'm super excited about knitting this Yay. one. And of course, she always does these beautiful cards. And so Matt did that one. In with yeah. With the lady luck with gambling. And she writes sweet notes on the back. She does a great job of making her club and very personal. One of the extras is the little begin stitch marker. Yay! System. From Rosemary. Oh. So fun. Rosemary from Sweden. Yep. And um, also I got a couple of other things this week because I didn't actually get around to, uh, it's just like a mound of stuff here, it's ridiculous. Um, I didn't actually get to buy anything from um, Dana at SSK. I was in her booth several times, but there were other people who were trying to get in and I wanted to make sure that they were able to get what they wanted. So that's Dana of Unwind. Dana of Unwind, yarn company. So I shopped her... Um, update last week Wednesday maybe mm -hmm. and she does a good job of packaging her stuff in crinkly bags sorry um, so I got two braids of the same color but in Ooh. different faces just to see how they spun differently this one is Corey Dale and this one is BFL Superwash BFL and it's the teeny bikini colorway yeah I like that colorway a lot I do too I like the pops of you can see how the dye takes a little bit differently on the different She's faces. got a new colorway for ovarian cancer. 
that I yeah, really it's like teal timber yes I really really like that one I've I think I'm gonna a lot have to get that stream about teal timber um so I got that and then Laura and I are doing some um we both kind of hit the fancy pants fiber hmm. <laughs> I haven't even um, seen mine yet no you haven't but it came in yesterday, and it, yours is on the Spiffy base, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, in the wine lips. Yeah. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah. So this one has got to go in. I need to start making a bag of things to give to Laura. And then mine is, let's go to the mall. And I actually knew the reference. It was a um, How I Met Your Mother show reference, and it's also in the Spiffy base. Oh, cool. So... Eloise um, and I were shopping that update, and she actually was trying to get the same skin as me, and I won. <laughs> you are awful. <laughs> I offered to give it to her, and she said no, that I won fair and square, so there. Yeah, Laura was actually kind enough to grab it for me, because I was driving back from meeting Mama Lenneman. Which is why they went to Leslie's house and not my yeah. house. So, um... I'll probably, I need to um, start some socks for somebody whose birthday is coming up soon. So maybe I'll start these stripy ones. I don't know. I want to hmm. do the Hermione's everyday pattern because so many people have done it and it's really pretty. And yeah. It's pretty simple. So. Yep. Um, anyway. I think it's good for variegated. Especially. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I'll use. I have so much yarn. I'll just pick something. It'll be fine. Um. You have SSK on here to talk about. I do, because I still have stuff that I have not shown that I bought at oh, SSK. Oh, yeah, I think I do too, but you can go ahead. Okay. So, leaning over to the rest of my bag, I have whoosh, another crafty girl. Ooh, this that's was a pretty This the color. one main skein that I got. It is Mr. Bassman, 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 not Bassman. Bass would be fishing. That's this pretty. Bass. Yep, it's one of the Muppet colorways. Huh. It's pretty. So I, like I like that. So I got that. And from Desert Vista, I had seen, I think it was Irish Diva had knit some socks out of Peacock. Someone on Instagram or Plark had knit socks out of the Peacock colorway. So I picked that up. That's a self-striping. I don't know how she does so much self-striping, and it's all so pretty. She it's does great gorgeous. Job. And this is a superwash merino wool um, nylon blend. 462 yards, so I could do some pretty high socks out of that. Mm -hmm. And then I got two skeins of Miss Babs Yowza. One in the Perfectly Reckless and one in the Shining City. And my intent was to do um, a Martina Bem, but they had a hitchhiker in the booth made out of the worsted, so I might the do... Brickless. Yeah, that was the original intent, but I think I might do this for one, and then I might do a sweater for one of the nieces out of this one. She had a really pretty color that's similar to the other one that you have. Um, funny Papers. Yeah. had a little more like purple and a little less of the lighter. Yeah. That I really wanted. I might have to get a skin of that. I might have gone to that booth like four times. I went several times, but they were all so busy each time, and I, I just, I want to make sure that they were able to serve the customers and not. Me. Yeah, I'm self-centered. And then the last thing that I got is they have a new base. And it is, this is very cool. It's a 75% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 10% tensile, but it doesn't, it's the tart base. It doesn't feel, it's a fingering weight. It doesn't feel like tensile at all, but it's got that shine to it. Cool. So I'm really excited to try this. And it is um, 500 yards. So this would be perfect for something like a hitchhiker, one of the mm -hmm. larger sideways shawls, and it is in the Vigo Bay colorway. Cool. You so. did some damage in Miss Babs' booth, huh? I always do damage in Miss Babs' booth, <laughs> but that's fine, because I'll, I'll go by and say hi to her at Stitches. Last year at Stitches, I bought a sweater's worth, mm -hmm. which I still haven't knit, so... I'll just, and last year at SSK well, I bought a sweater's worth, which I still haven't <laughs> When you think about it, like our event, especially for people um, that do a lot of the big events, like Miss Babs, Fiber Optic, and even Erin Lane, like, you're not going to be able to go somewhere where you're going to have as few other people competing um, as far as 
customers. Like it's not going to be as crowded at our event as it would be at a Stitches or a Rhinebeck or a Maryland Sheep and Wool. There's going to be less of a mass pushing yeah. into the booth. So you have more time to actually shop. Look and see. Yeah, that's right. why I buy Miss Babs. That's why I bought Miss Babs at SSK mm -hmm. versus going to Stitches. Right. Because it's insane. And now I'm playing with my spindle again. Yeah, I went by um, before the market opened when we were letting the teacher shop and everything. I walked around a few times and I walked by Minnie in color and I saw he had all his spindles laid out and there was an empty spot and I was like, Laura's been by. And he was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> How to get my zebra wood maple. It's pretty. It is pretty. He'll be it. The stitches tiny too. One? No, I like mine with, um, I don't know. I, I haven't spun enough. Um, I like this size, I think. Um, my Jenkins is a little bit too big. I'll have to do a, com a size comparison between all my spindles. Are you uh, a size My size? Turkish. Well, yes, but <laughs> I don't like the Jenkins as much because it's too heavy. It's definitely more of a plier. So the thing with spindles that are not supported, and you could use this as a support spindle. It does have a tip if you really want to, is the weight of the single actually has to support, this is kind of technique talk a little bit, actually has to support, be supported by, so the weight of the, your single has to be supported by the weight of your spindle. Mm -hmm. So something like this could not do as fine as my um, Jerry Brocks. But at the same time, if I'm looking to do something like a fingering weight single, this would be fine. Mm -hmm. But like the the heavier ones, like the heavy goldings, um, some of those are actually designated as plying spindles because you need the support of two or right. three plies to, to hold out it. That weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But right now I'm using it as a top. So. A toy, yeah. Yes. Um, as I just play on, because I don't know, I'm not into, I'm not knitting today apparently. Uh, Although I am rocking Candy Crush. I have a few things I'll show you guys. Yay! I've won one of these bags for a couple of years. Oh, yay! So I got an Erin Lane bag. I love those bags. And it's got a magnetic closure right here. So it's got a magnet sewn in that catches. Don't put it on your move. computer, because I've done that before, and it will <laughs> shut it off. My computer is down there. <laughs> um, so it can be moved up and down depending yeah. on how full your bag is, but it folds out and it's got two clear pouches for notions. It's awesome. And Laura carries hers everywhere, and I really yep. like it, so I've been meaning to get one. So I got this. And I don't remember what it was called, like what her name for it is, but it was like... It's her Notions pouch, yeah. 20 bucks, somewhere in the $20 range. Should get a um, second one. This I got from um, Heather of Highland Handmaids. I didn't know she did that, so I guess it's a relatively new thing. It is a little bit. She got a drum carter, um, I want to say back Earlier in like March year, maybe. Right? Yeah. Um, so this is a... Birch Bat, Wool, Superwash Wool, and Angelina. And Pretty! Merino. Oh, so it's Merino, BFL, and Angelina. And it's 83 grams, and it's called Bad Things. Nice. And it's this very me. It's nice. So red. 83 grams is around, what, three ounces? Yeah, it's a little over three okay. ounces. Pretty. Yep. Yes, and it so is very you. Got, yeah, the bright, bright red, which go into the darker with the black and silver Stellina. So. And it's got red Stellina in it, too. Yeah. So I got Pretty. that from Heather. And I got this from um, Nitty in Color. Mm -hmm. This is called Frozen Solid. That's the colorway. It's Angelina Bamboo, Falcon, Firestar, and Merino. And it's Rolex. Oh, cool. It's, it's 2.4 ounces in this pretty Sort of. It makes me think of polar bear and ice caps. I need to make sure I go say hi to her. That's it. Just... You are breaking all the things. Maybe. So, I got that from her. And... It just flipped upside down. I'm so klutzy. This is my my precious skein of Nashville Nights from Desert Vista Diaries. Cool. I didn't even see that. Yeah, because cause one went in the bag that's being given away, and uh -huh. I was like, ooh, I need this too. So I got a skein of this. Cool. And then the last thing was actually the first thing I bought, I think, from Gail's Art. I got Velvet <gasps> Elvis. I have BFL that colorway. 
and I, Gail does outstanding fiber bases. She was really picky about what she uses, and it's always really well done. She always has great stuff. So this is the Velvet Elvis colorway, and then I got, this is a new base um, for me, Chocolate Alpaca, 70% and 30% silk, so it's undyed, four ounces, and it was only 13 bucks. And it is pretty beautiful. It is so beautiful. It's so shiny because of the silk. And I may have to get more at the next the next time that I see her. It's so pretty. Oh. She's got really pretty undyed stuff. Yes, her undyed stuff is and it's like I could just crawl into a bed of the stuff. It's so mm -hmm. nice. Oh. I have so. that in silver that Hank bought for me to spin for her at in December. Yeah, so <laughs> which I really need to get to. Oh. I'm it's only putting there are enough hours in the day. The <laughs> so that's that is the wrap up of all that I bought. That plus the stuff from last week. So cool. Should we do our drawing? I think we should. All right, I have so Ravelry I have up, so random... you pick a. Which one are you gonna do first? You tell me. Let's do fiber. Okay, so between numbers two and what? I go first. Laura always goes first. Um, it's all about Laura. Four fifteen. All right. So no, it was a. Uh, remember, there's a YouTube video about grammar and food. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like I and Mike went to the store, and Mike brings a knife, and he goes. <laughs> Mike goes first. Mike, Mike always goes first. You need to link that in the show notes. <laughs> all right. So I have this little app. I don't know if it'll work. But I think it will. I think I used it once before. So I can only spin on my phone if it won't. Two and four fifteen. Okay. So let's generate the number. It says it's one hundred and twenty six. So that should be on the sixth page. And I really enjoy um, reading y'all's act of kindness stuff. Um, someone had put in there, and I can't remember who, how she feels like you know it's hard with the act of kindness um once because a true act of kindness you don't want to brag about right but it's i find it very inspirational for me and good to prompt me to do even more was it I 126 it's, it's 126 was okay. the number yeah i think it's very useful because like a lot of people had said um i paid for the guy behind me in line i don't even know him but i paid for the guy behind yeah. me in line at starbucks and i was like i would have never thought of that like this gives me ideas of ways that I could be kind to people that I wouldn't have even thought yeah. of doing. So so it's Pom Q U N 75 Oh, she posted multiple times, though. Did we make a... No, I'm sorry. I'm totally lying. She only has three posts ever on Ravelry. Oh, wow. So I thought there were three, and I was like, oh, she posted three times. And then I... Uh, no. She has three posts total on Ravelry. So that's very cool. So she has a 33% cool. success rate, at least, of many <laughs> things. That's pretty good. Oh, and so uh, she always tries to lend a hand, a helping hand at work. It could be as simple as bringing someone their, their mail to them or helping them meet a deadline. So P-O-M-Q-U-N-75, send me, la la, a PM, and I will find a way to get this in the mail without breaking that trindle. <laughs> <laughs> Bubble wrap will be involved, I yes, suspect. I think so. So, okay, so yours next is the yarn bag and all of the goodies that go with it. And yours and, is it a lot more, six hundred and eighty-one. Um, well, there's more knitters than there are spinners. I think is probably part of that. I'm not judging your greater number. I'm just saying that you okay, have six hundred and eighty-one. So it's two and what? Six hundred and eighty-one. Six eight one. Okay, so I don't. It has no number generated between two and six hundred and eighty-one. Generate the number, 237. So that's going to be on Ten? 4, 5, 10. Yeah. Should be what on was the number 10. again? What 237? Number 237. Crystalline. Awesome. Well, what was her way On of... those days, I really don't want to go to work. I put on a skirt. I'm a fluffy girl and have some issues of my own, but I've been told by multiple people that I have good legs. It's always a mood lifter to show off my best feature. That's super sweet. That is sweet. And so, Crystalline, send me, Leslie, you don't call me Les, a private message on Ravelry with your address, and I'll get it sent off next week at some point. Um, and I just want to just say thank you to everybody who took the time to leave a note. 
Um, it's yeah. very sweet. It's nice to kind of see how other people sort of do their pick-me-ups. It's yep. nice to to see a lot of similarities between me and a lot of the people who post it. So, um, I have a skein of yarn to give away, but I don't know how. So that's your job to figure out how. Okay? Well, we have two fishnets that we told them last week that we'd be oh. giving away. And this has to wait another week. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm just going to show y'all what's going to be given away next week because I love it so much. Okay. This Ooh. is a cyborg craft room. And I totally wanted to keep this for myself. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> but I'm not. Um, and this is on the Asparkalate base, which is nylon, mm -hmm. um, wool, and Stellina. And it's 438 yards in the stellar colorway. Very pretty. And this is actually her favorite color, the dyer's favorite color. And I love it. Gorgeous. And so that'll be next week's giveaway. So okay. what are we giving away for fishnets this so week? So fishnets, we talked about that last week. We have two skeins of her flashing colorway. It's her intentional flash. This one is Panache Fingering, which is Intentional Flash Little Red Convertible. It's Superwash Nylon Selena. And then this one is Intentional Flash Violet Gray. And it is Superwash Nylon. So just go over to fishnets.etsy.com. How about we do your favorite dye method? Because she does a lot of different dye methods. So, so pick one of her dye one, methods. Intentional flashing, intentional pooling, striping, striping. variegate, solid, tonal. Um, she does the, what's it called, where you go from one, a gradient. Gradient. So just go over there, and maybe you can even link to one of your favorites if you want, but your favorite style of dyeing that she does. And there's two, and they'll be in the same thread. And we'll just draw from we'll that bread. draw randomly, yes. You must be a member of the group. One, one post per, per person. person. And um, we'll close it Sunday, well, well, Monday. Monday when we record. Yeah, so basically make sure that you have it in by Monday afternoon, Eastern Time, U.S., the, I don't know, 5th, 12th, 13th, whatever that Monday is of August. I'm supposed to go to Michael that night with Michael that night to dinner. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. Yes, my my fiance and my son are taking a trip to Memphis. And oh, I didn't so, know Kobe was going. Yeah, he's gone. Mm -hmm. Oh, fun. Yep. And um, I'm going later in the month, but um, they're going and they're going to spend time with Michael's dad and family and all that. And Laura is taking Michael out for his birthday. So my yep. best friend and my fiance will be having dinner on his birthday. And I will <laughs> be there. Where are you going to take him? Are you going to take him to sushi? I'm taking him to Outback because he loves that Cajun thing yeah. that they only serve, at, I guess, Southern Outbacks. Oh. Yeah. It was a big pasta. deal last time. So, <laughs> you know, whatever. And then uh, your birthday is tomorrow. My birthday is tomorrow. Which I'll is be 33 years old. Also and... the day that Stash Dash closes. Yes, that's true. And I totally met my Stash Dash goal. You have to post pictures, otherwise it doesn't I'm count. not going to do that <laughs> prizes. Hello. I haven't updated my project page in three years. I need I have to. A uh, <laughs> like, I don't have time. I need um, to post my pictures. That's my goal for tomorrow. I'm actually going to give y'all till Tuesday night. Um, actually, probably Wednesday, because I have open house Tuesday night. So that way y'all have a little bit more time to post pictures. This is not knit, just post pictures. <laughs> there are rules. Um, <laughs> We're so, so good yeah, with rules. We'll do that. Um, we should go over how we got to our yardages next week. Okay. Because um, I gotta, I have to make a list of mine. Cause I don't know where. I'm gonna I have all my pictures put in the thread, so mine'll <laughs> be easy. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's it. I have a steak dinner waiting for me upstairs, Yum. so I'm gonna say goodbye to y'all. And um, next time you see me, I'll be a year older. <laughs> It's or a true. day older, okay. or a week older. Whatever, I don't feel 33, so I don't care. It doesn't matter. My brother's birthday was the second, and I called yes. him, and I was like, Happy birthday, you're 31, and he's like, You'll always be a year older than me, <laughs> no matter how many times you tell me how old I am. <laughs> Jerk. Oh, All so right. Please. All right, well, bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.